On a previous video, I asked which game you preferred and would rather spend more time on, and Hollow Knight won by a landslide. So as a response, here's everything you need to know about Team Cherry's latest update to its crowned jewel. Let's begin. So, in summary, there are three hidden bosses, a stag station that conceals itself near the palace grounds, and an additional dream nail ability labeled the Dream Gate, imbuing the player with the freedom to venture through the game and place a sort of bookmark on a point in which they plan to return. This new ability is actually extremely badass and has some pretty cool uses. It makes the most sense to me to begin the video with the most perplexing part of the update. So let's talk about how this Dream Gate actually works. The Dream Gate is a makeshift travel mechanism in between levels, and there doesn't seem to be any limit on the distance you can travel, so I'm guessing you can just pop this thing anywhere. Hold the down button and press Y or triangle to place a gate anywhere you'd like. Now wherever you travel, you can return to that gate at the cost of one essence by doing the same thing only with the up button. This gives the player a whole new level of maneuverability. You can place it near a bench as an escape route if you're having trouble with the section and you're knocking on death's door with only one mask and no soul and you don't feel like chancing the loss of all that precious geo. One of my favorite things to do with it is use it as an assist for grinding enemies. If I'm at Kingdom's Edge, I'll put on Fragile Greed and Gathering Swarm, find a clump of those hoppers, and slap a Dream Gate somewhere safe before I engage. Kill whatever's in that area and return to the Dream Gate. Everything will have respawned and you can rinse and repeat that area for as long as you like. Once you get 2400 Essence and visit Seer, there aren't really any more quests having to do with that essence, so feel free to be as liberal as you want with it. The single greatest thing about this ability, though, is that certain quests can be completed much easier via the Dream Gate. I could take the traditional route to the Queen's Gardens after receiving the flower from the mourner in the resting grounds, head through the crossroads, into the wastes, and pop out near the glade, or, <laughs> or, or you can do what I did. Pop a gate right at where you finish the quest, head to the mourner, receive the flower, teleport back to the gardens, put the flower on the grave, and you tell that quest to go fuck itself. Mission complete, dickhead. I'm sure there are more creative uses for the dream gate that I'm overlooking, but those select few strategies were just something I discovered after playing with it for an hour or so. So let's talk bosses. There are three of them in total, two you fight, and one you run away from. It's difficult to explain. The first boss requires you to complete a small checklist of side questing. You will have needed to free Bretta from the fungal wastes by taking this path here up to where she's closed off. Make your way through the length of the Zote side quests, rescuing him wherever the instance presents itself, at both the Green Path and the Deep Nest. And then finally at the Colosseum of Fools, where you take his life ender nail and succinctly push it straight up his ass. If you do all of that, the two characters will eventually cross paths at Dirtmouth. Bretta's house will have opened, and you're free to collect the Mask Shard inside. The update adds in a secluded cubicle that descends the player below the house and reveals Bretta's flattering attraction to Zote, whom she has labeled the Grey Prince. Dream nailing the statue takes you to the area where you can challenge the Grey Prince a psychological manifestation of Zote, if he were, well, <laughs> actually intimidating. He is pretty strong though, so I'd recommend putting some thought into your charm build. Even with quick focus, it's still a pain to heal in between his attacks. I found the most luck with nail-boosting charms like Mark of Pride, Fragile Strength, Quick Slash, and keep in mind this is a dream battle, which means you can equip any charm from the Fragile set and not worry about risking them breaking up on death. Descending Dark is a great spell to use here. Time it carefully to where you're landing on him just after he lands. You should avoid his shockwaves and deal some killer damage in the process. Quick Slash and Fragile Strength also work pretty good. Long Nail or Mark of Pride can be equipped, but I don't find it that necessary necessary since he spends most of the fight grounded and pretty easy to reach the majority of the time. Lifeblood Core and Grubberfly's Elegy is also good here because it allows you 4 extra hits, or 5 hits in total, before the effect of the charm is nullified, because the Elegy charm only works if you're at full health. Defeating the Grey Prince initially will give you 300 Dream Essence, but you do have the choice to fight him multiple times, and with each fight his health increases and his attacks do an additional mask of damage. As far as I know, there's no stacking limit. 
meaning if you want to grind it to where every attack deals 8 or 9 masks of damage or something ridiculous, you can totally do it. What is interesting though is that defeating him 10 times will give the statue a rich golden appearance. Not sure why that's in the game, but you know, that's something. The second boss, the White Defender, is a curious foe, and as the update title suggests, he's certainly more of a hidden dream than the Grey Prince. Starting in the waterways below the City of Tears, head directly right to where you faced the Dung Defender. You should be right below the giant switch you use to restore the energy through the waterways. Use Descending Dark and smash the ground below you. The reason it's so hidden is because usually the ground quakes and shudders when walking over it, but this one is more rigid and requires you to just take a shot in the dark. To the left is where you can initiate the battle, and to the right is where you can pick up a king's idol. Now I just want to take a second and talk about how intelligently laid out this is. This king's idol is here for a very deliberate reason. Taking this relic to the Collector in the City of Tears will sometimes prompt dialogue that educates you on the city's past, Hallow Nest's prime, before it all just went to fuck in a rusty bucket. The Relic Collector tells you of five elite defenders, the strongest, most formidable fighters of Hallow Nest, the arms, the claws, and teeth of the kingdom's ruler, the Pale King. Basically, the secret service of Hallow Nest. The reason this dialogue is so important is because when you initiate this fight, it couldn't be any clearer that this white defender was one of these elite five. The fact that you're fighting in the White Palace is indicative of this detail, in addition to the backdrop of the five silhouetted figures presiding over the room. The defender's real name? Ogrim a servant of the Pale King whose insecurities plagued him and impeded him from his true potential. When defeated, Ogrim hangs his head in a sour shame before the five silhouettes. They disappear, the night collapses, and the dream is over. Thing is, Ogrim isn't practicing some sort of self-reflection by looking at his silhouette, because if you look, his silhouette isn't up there. The identities of the five figures are the Pale King, surrounded by the remaining four trusted defenders. This is where the lore gets a little obscure. Due to various clues we can gather from chatting with NPCs, Hallow Nest crumbled for a laundry list of reasons. As far as I can tell, the infection going around was simply the final nail in the coffin. And I'm guessing whatever happened to the kingdom resulted in the king and his defenders enacting exile on the unfortunate Ogrim leaving him behind to tend to his own grief. Dream nail him during the fight and he will identify these four defenders. Hegemol, Zamir, Drea, and Isma. Okay, so let's talk about how to fight this guy. In the most literal interpretation, this dude is full of shit. Second only to the Radiance, he has the highest health capacity in the entire game. Do you remember fighting the Guardian at the Crystal Peak, and then you found out there was a second one directly above him and you shit your pants? Well, it's basically this done again with the Dung Defender. He's faster, harder to keep up with, and just across the board a bigger threat. The same charms mentioned before worked just as well here, although I would contemplate swapping out one of them for a quick focus. The time windows in between attacks are a little friendlier than the Grey Prince, but you're still better off to rely on cheesing the corners of the room for safe healing. Defeating him up to five times will offer different dialogue. By the fifth defeat, Ogrim will actually acknowledge that his dream is being invaded, and admires your strength as a fellow knight. Now the third battle is less of an actual boss and more of a rapid sequence of tasks. I would call it a quick time event, but even that terminology falls short. In the Spirit's Glade, a new dream warrior by the name of Revik. Revik something. Someone correct me in the comments. A dream warrior appears to challenge any foolish intruders that threatens the tranquility of the resting souls ahead. Dream nailing her, or any of the graves, will trigger her into action. From then on, she will charge at you with her nail dealing heavy damage. Your objective is to free all of the souls in the glade, which I think is 36 in total. Reva cannot be damaged or defeated, and the only way to best the warrior is to prove her mission worthless, by setting free all of the souls and then immediately exiting the area. If you do this, Revik will have lost any recollection of why she was guarding the glade in the first place. Dashmaster is recommended here to keep up with the frequency of her charged attacks, but even then it isn't totally necessary. It does help a lot with maneuvering quickly while also dodging her charges. Dream Wilder Charm is an obvious must because that speedy nail charge is pretty useful given the short time you have in between attacks. 
Outside of that, Rivik is a peculiar character. The lore on her is extremely limited because this isn't a character we've seen before, and she doesn't appear to have any connection with the flourishing of Hallownest, nor the Five Knights or the Pale King, so a considerable part of Rivik's lore is left up in the air for interpretation. I'm not exactly sure where she fits into the narrative, and all the researching I tried to do on the wikis, fan pages, and even going as far as the original Kickstarter page. I've found nothing of interest, so your guess is as good as mine. I encourage you to replay the full game now that the update's out. You'll find that it's more than just fresh content they added to the game. Some enemies have new moves and attacks, like the secret Nosk battle in the Deep Nest. The new array of movements he's been given has made him a much more threatening obstacle. You can't just cheese him by jumping over him and downstriking anymore. Finally, I want to go ahead and quickly toss this in before this video wraps up, but I did talk about a hidden stag station near the palace grounds. The station is directly to the right of where you would enter the White Palace. Break down the wall to reveal the station, and the bell costs 300 geo to unlock. There's a bench past the station that you can rest at, which is a little strange to me because usually you see the bench before the bell. But as far as I'm concerned, the stag station has no significant contribution to the lore. The stag usually chimes in with some dialogue when you open a new station, but this time he's just as silent as ever. Oh, and the game has an option for Italian translation too. So if you're into that, there you go. So thanks for joining me. This video was honestly tons of fun to make. The developers have given us plenty to speculate about, and I do have high hopes that we're going to see much more coming from their offices here in the next year. Hollow Knight is not a game you should pass up. It's too rich in content for its price to be slept on. If you've picked up this game, tell me your experience with the new update, and I'll meet you down below as usual. Subscribe, ring the bell, all that cool stuff. See you next time.